Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode number 42 of Terra Firma Craft Reloaded. We've been digging a big hole with our new excavator. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, but as you may have guessed from the kind of montage intro there, we are going to be uh, doing some gunpowdery fun to start off today's episode. And I thought that, you know, getting the excavator that everyone's been asking me to um, for so long kind of fit this project. Although probably next time I might just bring two, two gunpowder barrels, do you know what I mean? Bring one to do this initial uh, surface level explosion and then put one lower down. But what we've managed to do here, I mean look, see there's still pieces here. Yeah, it feels like that the center that we triangulated isn't necessarily the center of the vein underground. Which is another very interesting point of learning to be honest. Anyway, I've been kind of perfecting my technique with this thing. It is a little bit tricky sometimes because here's the crucial thing. The thing that you would expect that it could do that it can't is this. See, because of the gravity, it doesn't actually get a 3x3 three three when you come at it from the side. In fact, it usually only gets about four of the nine blocks done. So we kind of have to do this top-down method that I've been perfecting. Anyway, right, I can't wait any longer, so let's just do this now. I'm very excited. So what we want to do is grab all our lovely gunpowder here. <laughs> Another whole barrel full. Beautiful. And we can use our new red steel axe here that we got on the stream on Tuesday. Also on the stream on Tuesday, we enchanted our blue steel suit here. We've got Feather Falling 4. This is a combination of books and just throwing enchants on from the table. We've got at least protection three on all of them, protection four on both the legs and the chest plate, and an extra projectile protection four on the chest plate too there, feather falling. It's, it's pretty nice. And if we get more protection three books, we can upgrade the hat and the, the shoes to protection four too. Look at the amount of this gravel and dirt. This is what I wanted to look at. What does Dolomite actually give us? We do get some selenite. Satin Spar, I think, is saltpeter, isn't it? Lemonite, get some coal out of it. Kaolinite. It's medium, but we'll probably, once we've uh, automated our sifting, we can probably sift all that gravel. Hmm, interesting. So we could just pop it right here, so it's not too deep under, so we won't get cave-ins, hopefully, destroying our blocks, but we will be a little bit underneath so that we can kind of... Um, you know, impact as deeply as possible. Don't want to go too deep though and end up making all of this excavation for nothing. Let's not take a risk because last time we really flopped, didn't we? So I, I think we'll just, we'll go with it right there, like no deeper than that. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, as night time's actually falling, let's just sleep here first. I'm excited. Hopefully we haven't messed this up. We'll just flick the lever and find out. I was a lot more cautious first time around. Let's go. Okay, yeah, I took damage. Even from back here. A small amount. Our chest survived. It looked like there was some sort of shifting cave in -y type stuff. Oh, God, look. Maybe it just isn't effective at all. It looks exactly the same as the last one did. And actually, maybe again, we were just too deep because it's still covered in cobblestone. The floor is covered in cobblestone. And there's just not that many items around, but let's see. We don't have any limonite on us now. Oh, okay. Now that we get closer, the ground is much more covered in items than it was on our first attempt here. This might actually have been worth it. There's gems and stuff. We did get some coal. Okay, I think we've pretty much picked up everything now, or nearly everything. There's certainly a lot of mining that we can still do here, should we want to at some point. Looks like we dug about the right sized crater though, like none of our walls got hit. Um, so in terms of the excavation, if anything we overdid it slightly on that side. Um, but yeah, the excavation area seemed to be just about right really. So that's good. Might as well take all this redstone with us. 
So we actually got multiple stacks of rich limonite out of this. And just over a stack of coal. Not a lot of coal then. Alright, so I finished sorting everything out. So we've got a ton of gravel, but still plenty here that we haven't. There's these two chests are st uh, where I kind of ran out. All the rest just have dirt left in them. But look, so we've got a whole row of vessels full of gravel there too, apart from that one. We're taking a little bit of dirt back with us and some of the cobblestone there. Then we've got one, two, three, four full vessels of rich lemonite. Some scraps of lemonite in that one with some more stone and smooth stone. Our flint and our coal there. Loads more flint. Some of the redstone and the gems at the end. So yeah, all in all, like a decent haul. Oh, in fact, hold on though. We could also carry a barrel. I might just fill up a barrel with, uh, with the gravel too. All right, and we are home, baby. So let's get these four and a half vessels of rich lemonite cooking. Very nice, very nice. All right, perfect. And then while that's cooking, you will, you will notice that um, a load of the vessels aren't in here anymore. So we've got a few other bits and bobs there we'll pack away shortly. But just to hammer the point home, I just already sorted out all of the gravel that we brought back with us. So we've got that whole barrel just chilling there. Then in our dolomite um, locker, it's just pretty much all gravel. And then there's even eight vessels full of gravel in the corner too. So yeah, that's... That's one for when we automate sifting, when we got golems doing it for us or something, I think. <laughs> or maybe we install the mod that um, fills inventories, like I said, and then we can do longer AFK sessions. But um, I'm very curious to see exactly how much limonite we got here. Oh, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be like 100 ingots or something. Okay, we got a lot of flint on that trip. Five, five stacks of flint. Is this all finished now? So 95 ingots from one explosion. It was in the middle of a rich vein, but I also don't think it was the densest vein. I can imagine if we hit the right spot with this, with a gunpowder barrel like that, it's going to be ludicrous. So yeah, I think that's us unpacked from our trip. Okay, I know I show a lot of this in this series, but it is one of the most satisfying things um, that there is in Terra Firma Craft, right? Placing down ingots. Oh yeah. Right, well look, there you have it. 64, 64 and 56 makes cha-ching. If, if you're good at math, then... What is it? 184? We've got just shy of 200 ingots there, like 184 ingots of iron. So that should keep us going for a while. That's probably like one more immersive engineering machine. Probably use up all of that on the excavator, won't we? So in fact, while we're on that subject, let's talk a little bit about the ore excavator, because that probably is the next big thing we're going to build. We're probably, well, we're definitely not going to do it today. Um, but let's just start prepping for it. Let's just have a look in here. So the excavator is one of the pinnacles of modern engineering. It's able to dig up minerals from veins inaccessible by normal mining. So basically it just looks at the chunk, and each chunk has like a predetermined like collection of ores in it that you can infinitely mine, I think, possibly infinitely, or at least you can get like a huge amount off of each chunk, and every chunk has like a certain few minerals in it. Oh yeah, look, all the different different definitions. So one that says it's bauxite will only contain rich bauxite, it's kind of lame. One that says cassiterite is gonna have cryolite, sphalerite, and cassiterite in it. Different percentages, so a coal one. Wow, a coal one would be nice, say, hey, wouldn't it? Like a little mineral boost. Copper one looks good as well, with a bit of nickel mixed in. One thing I notice is that everything is rich, it just digs up rich stuff. Oh wow, look, the platinum one is one of the ways we'll get a load of ardite. It doesn't look like there's one that has any cobalt in it, interestingly enough. That's lapis, yeah, there's not, not one that, that gives you cobalt. Nevertheless, the ardite one is probably more valuable to us. So looking at the, uh, at the excavator here, 12 blocks of steel, nine light engineering, 13 heavy and three skeletons. I don't think it's as expensive as the arc furnace, you know. I think that looks cheaper. It actually requires 4,000 RF per tick, so it's going to be about the power generation and the fact that we need to be able to set this thing up and then move it around. So the power generation solution that we come up with for this thing needs to be portable. This is where I, I feel that the oil will come in. It's why I was so keen to make sure that our power generation at our base is passive and renewable 
because it means that like any oil that we do have to gather isn't just going to be burnt up at home it's going to be used for special occasions when we're out and about and your excavator is going to be what does it look like pretty cool yeah the ore excavator is going to be the thing that we use out and about the most i would imagine oh wait hang on does it have like multiple pieces oh i see that you put the two pieces together so is that a combined shopping list there yeah okay looks to me like the two pieces combined that's the combined shopping list a lot more expensive than it was a moment ago <laughs> lots of steel 21 blocks of steel and i believe the light engineering blocks are the ones that are very iron heavy but the heavy engineering blocks are steel that's just a little ramble from me on the topic of uh of the excavator and why we're going out and still grabbing so much more iron and things and like i said i think a trip to the mob farm between episodes um is going to be a good thing that will get, get our pig iron up and then we've also got a diamond hammer with unbreaking three on it ready to go and sand just falling out of the, every orifice here so that's that's also good but look at this note blocks somebody mentioned note blocks or someone asked me what my favorite block in minecraft was and i decided it was the note block and then i realized i hadn't done anything with note blocks in this series yet so I'm going to build something much, much larger. We're going to build a recording studio in this series somewhere, <laughs> like a big jam track, uh, kind of like basically a big room full of note blocks that we can play like an instrument. I've done it before in vanilla, so I thought might as well try it in TFC. But just to kind of get us going with note blocks, I, um, I made this. Pretty nice, so let's have it once more. The timing is correct, it's just, um, you know what it's like with note blocks, sometimes they're a little bit laggy. Banger. So this is where we can come to celebrate our victories. It's our little like fanfare. Um, and we're gonna need to maybe tidy up the edges a little bit. We had to expand this area just slightly to fit it all in. But we've got bass, we've got lead, we've got kick and we've got snare. And that is based, that is every single part that's in the original recording of this theme tune. The original version that I did is only, you know, kick, snare, bass, and lead. So yeah, this is inspiring. The, the reason that we're not doing the bigger, like, jamming room studio uh, thing now is because we just need so many repeaters. And repeaters are so expensive. They each repeater re requires two gold ingots um, and you have to make each one manually on the anvil the only recipe for a repeater is like this and these crude circuits the only recipe for those is like this on an anvil with a gold sheet which is two ingots and then worked with a piece of redstone and so you've got to do that you've got to do the anviling for each individual repeater and the kind of uh, studio room that I was probably planning would need sort of maybe a stack or two of repeaters so we'll get there we'll do it um but maybe after we've done the ore excavator you know <laughs> uh for now this was enough to kind of get me excited about using note blocks again and uh yeah have a bit of fun and we've got our theme tune very nice oh <laughs> Look at that. Gorgeous. Good morning. Right, so what for the rest of this episode? Well, I've got a few blocks I've been gathering in my inventory. I've got a couple of ideas here. And to take a little bit of a different kind of turn for the rest of this episode, we're gonna just do some building. Just some calm, peaceful, kitchen-based building. So we have this house over here, it needs finishing. And really, I'm happy with the top of it. Everything from this level upwards, I think, is fine. Like, because we've got our our little bedroom level here. We've got our balcony now. There is still roof access, but we've got our elevator up to the top. We've got our lovely, yeah, balcony and the windows. Like, we might add more things into this room. But the building is finished up here. You come down here and it's a mess. It's chaos. <laughs> um, 
once you go down here, all of this is kind of finished, and we have our back door. We might upgrade down here, but yeah, basically, it's just this kitchen level. And so the first thing I notice is how we're using the same block everywhere. And so what's the cliche thing to put on the floor of a kitchen? It would be black and white tiles, right? So if I just, for example, just do this. Should get a feel for what this is going to look like here. Hopefully I've picked the right ones. I've gone with chalk, which is, I think, about as white as the rock types come. And basalt, which is about as as black as they come. Yeah, I mean, that is going to be a kitchen floor. Right? <laughs> like, that's a kitchen floor. <laughs> I don't know why, like, checkered tiles means kitchen, but it does. So we kind of have some decisions about how we sort of meld things together here. I think we just have to say there's, there's a certain amount of this that is the kitchen floor and a certain amount of it that isn't. I've not got very much basalt, you'll notice. We had a total of 12 pieces of smooth basalt and 8 um, just like normal basalt that we can smoothen. I guess we can be cheeky and leave the one that's underneath the clay oven. <laughs> Um, and that actually saves us a basalt one, so that's that's aligned perfectly there. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, so I've just been casually working on this a little bit more. I've kind of encased this area here, so as you come down this ladder now, you're kind of met with this quite compact little landing. Maybe we could actually raise the roof. Raise the roof, yo! <laughs> yeah, something, something like this, anyway. So you have your way down to our... Um, ladder down to bedrock there which we can probably also put a lid on there we go and you've got your way out here into this which is probably going to become our armory uh, if we end up using that room where the armor is now just for more like um enchants for books and uh you know anything to do with the enchantment table above it, it can be like a the first room of the library that we build on that hill there so yeah the armor's likely to come here maybe it'd just be tools and weapons in that little room there because they get enchanted don't they i don't know anyway so this room we'll probably deal with later but if we can just encase all of this that would be great and so yeah i think that's gonna work we need to put a roof on this particular room here but i'd quite like it to be a tall roof i'd like that to be our roof and i realized i'd like to keep this pillar because we could just come round, but actually that pillar is quite an interesting feature and it would be better if the wall for the kitchen ran along like that. Okay, but we are running super low on basalt now. I mean, we know where to go to get more. It's not even too far away. But I'm thinking we just have a little bit of a rearrange in here. Chuck that down like that. So that's nice, actually. Nice big, wide counter there, little one there. And then this one I was thinking we would probably just move it um, away from the stairs there. Now, this is the next question. So in fact, let's just finish that off and chuck a few of those in there just to start mapping, mapping out our walls. And I was thinking a window, like a, a high window there would be quite nice, depending on what we do with this room, you see, because whatever height that window is at, that's going to dictate the kind of roof of this room and we can't raise we can't lower this any so this is the floor here so yeah the window there would need to be quite high up anyway i'm not even convinced i really like the schist with the uh, black and white i think what would be really helpful is a different block here okay like a kind of joining block and so because the stairs they just jar so one of the things i was thinking we could do is we could take that out and we could put a basalt step there and maybe have like a chalk one there and then it's like the line is actually drawn right here you see but if we found another block to use as the middle block there just along the bottom of each wall maybe that could be the stairs do you know what i mean
Boom. Yes. I think we're done here. At least for now. We need to sort out this room here. Um, but I've kind of closed it all off nicely and in line with the same contour of upstairs. Continued the window across. I'm all out of spruce wood, but we could chop some down and run it along that gap. My only concern with doing that is that we can't really uh, make clean edges there at the turning point you're going to end up with the the kind of inside of the plank uh, texture showing in those edges but I guess those decisions will be made when we build the armory there which will probably be in the next few episodes I feel like getting this thing finished but um here's the whole flow of the area so now we come down a contained um I shut those a contained kind of ladder and into a proper sort of little I mean, it's very compact in here, but a little landing. We've got a door there down into our um, our mine shaft at bedrock, which I'd be interested to explore a little bit more with our with our like hammer and stuff now. Um, and then the door to come out here into whatever room this sort of becomes. And I've run that log along there. Yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's looking good. And then. The, uh, the main event, the kitchen. So I had to actually nip out and get a bit more chalk to finish the job. And I kind of went with a checkered approach down into the stairs here, which then just cuts off at the point that we hit the, the beams, the support beams there. I think that kind of works. Feels nice. I was debating about these corners with myself for a long time. But if you think about the chessboard pattern, alternating pattern going down into the third dimension those two would actually both be black in order to keep the the chessboard going so although these tiny little white corners I had them as basalt instead of chalk but I think it's fine I think it looks good and from up here it feels like the pattern's continuing um, maybe a bit plain with the, how tall these walls are sunk a few more of these lights in but overall like you're not going to be looking up very much you're going to come in here I'm be doing this. I will start making sandwiches again because my max health is abysmal. <laughs> I just have no grain or dairy. And I think in the next few episodes we're going to sort out our um, sort of barrel operation. Build the pub. Um, maybe do a bit more in the farm workshop as well in terms of having like really clear processes for making cheese and things. Um, and starting to do that in a bit more bulk because cheese keeps for a long time. So we should do like a batch of like 10 barrels of cheese or something. Do you know what I mean? And then it's just there. Same goes for the bread, really. But we've kind of missed the boat for uh, for planting new grains this year. But if we look down here, I have been trying to cut the mould off these. So there's a fair bit of bread we could make. We could just turn all of that into bread as well. Just go on a mass-producing thing. We've got the sugar as well. We could experiment with potions. Uh, so, yeah, all food for thought for next time. But I think... Yeah, the little shelf up there, I suppose it's only the last thing I've discussed. I decided to go with the shelf in the end. I think it kind of works. It's quite nice, like, looking up and seeing the recessed window. You could almost break up the monotony by doing a similar thing over here. Because if we can get out into there, we actually can't anymore. We'd have to go out and round. Um, but it's, it's open anyway there. And if you imagine the balcony above extends out quite a distance so we could have a window underneath the balcony that was still sunken in like a like a sort of ledge like that over there could work um we've gone with the diagonal double door thing as well which is kind of funny all right so that'll ding dang do then thank you all very much uh, for watching as always and i'll uh, see you next time take care then peace